If we look at the example uh, in Rocky 3, so we have Rocky Balboa. He's enjoying the life of being the world champion. Then he's challenged by the arrogant Clubber Lang. Clubber wants to prove that he is the best boxer. Well, no one believes in Rocky anymore except for good old Apollo Creed. And Creed spends the entire movie trying to build up Rocky and train him so he's ready to take the championship again. At one point, it gets real heated between the two of them, and, and Apollo says, I'm still young enough to whip your butt. And Rocky comes back and says, yeah, how are you going to do that? It's my best Rocky. You taught me everything you know. Almost everything. You gotta remember, you fight great, but I'm a great fighter. How many of us have, uh, have mentors who have taught us almost everything? Almost everything. Has, have you ever had someone who, who taught you just enough so they won't surpass you? What I'm challenging all of us to do and, and to think about for the rest of our lives is the idea is to allow people to spread their wings, to fly. Fly be free and please surpass me. Let me give you all the tools that I have, all the knowledge I have, so yes, you will surpass me. Go. Because if you have people that are excited and they're motivated and they have drive, are you going to pull them back and say, calm down, calm down, you know, like, relax. Or you're going to say, go, do it, do whatever you want to do. Well, not whatever, but, you know, within reason. <laughs> and it's our role, our duty, to be the ones to set people free. Attitude. When you wake up in the morning, are you bouncing out of bed? I have made my husband stop saying the thing that he always says. And he used to get up and get out of bed and I hear this ah! You know the word. <laughs> ah! And I say, why do you have to say that? It like ruins my mental. Like I wake up and maybe not I'm not always jumping out of bed, but I have to mentally get myself going, think about it. Alright, we're moving. It's gonna be a great day. You you motivate yourself, you get pumped up, and then to hear that ah! it's like Oh, you're right, it's the morning, I just want to go back to bed. But, attitude. Attitude is everything. Let's think about when we had our meet and greet. And I loved it. There was a group of us, we were all downstairs, and, oh, Neil even came down, and we all said, Neil! And, you know, just, we're all happy, lively, and Jeff, you came down, and we all said, Jeff! And so much excitement, and it was, it was just the attitude and, and the atmosphere that we created. It was positive and that's what we're emanating is this great exuberant attitude. Let's talk about motivation. What is motivation? Motivation is the reason or reasons why we do things. So for us we're always thinking about what are our goals? What are our goals in life? Goals for our family? Goals for the Toastmasters Club? What do we want to do in our career? Do we want to be supervisors, directors, vice presidents, CEO? Do we have health goals, financial goals? We all have goals to achieve. And we all have to behave a certain way in order to find clarity of how we're going to achieve these goals. So let's talk about the aging woodcutter story. So there was this aging woodcutter, and he had been the best woodcutter in all the land for the last 30 years. But now the woodcutter is retired. And so the woodcutter is enjoying his retirement when this young man approaches his door with an axe on his shoulder and Ch -ch -ch -ch, I challenge you, woodcutter, to a woodcutting contest. Because he wanted to prove that he was the best in all the land. And the wood, old aging woodcutter said, no, 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 I'm retired. Don't want to have anything to do with this shuts the door. The young man returns five days in a row, does the same thing, the same challenge. Finally, the old woodcutter says, all right, I accept your challenge. And they go out to the wood, and they chop down all those trees, and the, the contest began. And it was chop, chop, chop. 
everybody could hear the rhythm. And then there was rhythm, rhythm, and for hour after hour, it was just going on. Everyone could hear the chap. And all of a sudden, there was only one chap. And this chap had stopped. And the old woodcutter left and took a break in the woods. The other guy's chopping, chopping. Ten minutes later, the old man comes back out. And then they're both chopping again. Chop, chop, chop. Another hour goes by. The old woodcutter goes back out and takes a break while the other guy's still chopping. And the young man's thinking, how's he ever going to get it all done? I'm obviously going to win. He's working so hard. He's sweating. He's taking off his shirt. He's, he's working hard. At the eighth hour, the old woodcutter puts down his axe and he says, I'm done. And the young man says, that's impossible. You know, I, I sell two trees down. What am, how in the world could you have chopped all your wood? And the woodcutter went on to say to his less crafty young man that while he was in the woods, he was sharpening his axe. Because you can cut a lot more wood a lot faster with a sharp axe. The whole idea is sharpen your tools. What is it that's going to motivate us to come every Wednesday to continue to sharpen our tools? What are those goals? Is it career? Is it personal development? What is it? Think about it in your own head and start to develop that. Because the only way we're going to get better and win in this race is if we all have the sharpest tools. Everybody's got a bachelor's. I said, you know, even Miss America's got a bachelor's degree. <laughs> Not that one Miss America from, from Alabama or wherever she was from. <laughs> but having an education isn't enough. Having a master's degree isn't enough. Having the tool set will get us there. Work smarter, not harder. I think we've all heard that before. Toastmasters is a great place to start. This is where we interact with each other. We learn how to scream. We serve one another when we evaluate, give feedback. We commit ourselves to development, to running meetings, to filling in spots when someone else just can't be there. We educate each other. We educate our mentees. We educate our fellow members, and we're doing all that when we're giving our speeches and doing table topics. And we all have a great attitude. We're here, we have positive thoughts, we're smiling, and we have motivation. We understand the reasons for why we behave the way we do, and together we work to achieve the goals that we have set. So here we are, we're training ourselves, training ourselves to be better speakers. So the next step is, what are you going to speak about? What do you have to say? If we're all going to be these phenomenal speakers, what are we going to say? What are we going to do? So that's what I leave you with today. Think about that next step, developing ourselves to that higher level, the next step, and becoming the most effective leaders and dynamic communicators we can be. And